Hey, it's Gabby. Um, I wanted to share with you something that's disturbing me. Um, I went, there's many forums online where people who travel write. Um, families that travel and, fam and travel bloggers and people say, hey, I'm doing this, what do you think? Um, I'm going to this country, any ideas, any suggestions? So I wrote in there that we want to do the Annapurna and we heard if you go off season that you can get it for um, even a third or less the price for Porter and uh, the guide, um, but I didn't want it to be dangerous. Um, so I asked people if they could tell me when's a good time to go so that you can save a lot of money, um, that it's still safe and dangerous, they can give me estimated cost. And there was a pretty long discussion between um, myself and two other travel bloggers um, who had both been, one had been to the Annapurna years ago before she had kids and the other had just done the Everett base camp um, with her son, who's 12, um, you know, Nepal hiking. She's not going in the street, is she? Okay, then, okay, you wanna tell her? So, um, I was really um, disturbed because, you know, we feel like we wanna do adventures, we wanna have challenges. Um, it's okay if it'll be hard, um, but we don't wanna do anything dangerous. Um, we've even kind of very, 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 briefly discussed the high altitude sickness that Kobe suffered from in Colorado a little bit. And when he drove um, through Cusco and, and in areas after Cusco and Peru, he really, really, really suffered from high altitude disease. And as far as I understood from what they were writing, that the Annapurna is gonna be 2,000 meters higher. Um, so that's one, we should look into it because if we go up there and we don't, and we are suffering from high altitude disease, or even if Kobe is suffering, then the hike's over. I mean, we can't continue hiking. Um, so one is to look up, look out, if, look up, is there a way that we can sort of in the next coming months start living in higher and higher elevations slowly, slowly? And if that would allow us to acclimate to that, that might be a solution. Um, and the other is to see if there's medication, I don't know, just to look into if there's a way to kind of circumvent the, the symptoms of high altitude or if he's susceptible, that's it. And the other thing is one of the women were like, yeah, when we did the Annapurna, seven people died in an avalanche. Um, and then the other woman was like, you know, Gabby, this isn't, um, this isn't a joke. These are the Himalayas. These are, these are mountains. These are, you know, if rocks decide to, to fall this way and not that way, when we were on it, then we would be dead. Um, and she said, your kids have to have very, very strong discipline. And when you tell them to do something, they do it. And it's not a, a free for all, you know? And I thought, God, you know, I have one son that when you say don't do, he goes and does um, because he's overconfident and he's a boy. And then I have a daughter who, who isn't coordinated so much yet. She tries really hard, but coordination isn't her strong suit. And suddenly I thought, what if I'm, what if I'm risking my children's life? Like, so what if the film producer and her crew are coming to record us? So what if we've made plans like this is stupid like if I'm risking if I'm taking a if I'm if, if I'm endangering my family I'm not gonna do it um, and then I got kind of upset about it and I thought you know what this is what we're gonna do first of all we're gonna be sure we have really good travels insurance ours expires in March and one of the women was like be sure you have really good insurance in case a helicopter has to come evacuate the five of you and I was like all right that'll that'll be interesting for a blog post um, Okay, so we'll get it good insurance, and then I think we're gonna go and do the Annapurna. We are in good enough shape that we can handle it, we can go as slow as we want, we can walk for a mile or two, you know? Um, and then at any point, if we feel it's dangerous, if we feel it's not safe, if we feel uncomfortable, then we stop. No pushing ourselves. Um, and the other thing that comes to my mind is that one of them had said that if you do half of it, you don't have to do the, the Talong Pass, you don't have to do the pass, you can go part way. And I'm not coming in there with ego saying, I'm gonna do the Annapurna, my kids and I are gonna break some record, we're gonna do this, no. We're gonna go, if we're enjoying ourselves, if we feel that we can handle it, we'll do it. If not, we're gonna stop. Because I don't, I would never forgive myself if for any ego reason or whatever, logistical reason, or because I'm uncomfortable that we spent money or someone else spent money to come film us, that we did this and then we get hurt. I'm not doing anything foolhardy. These are my kids' lives. And Kobe and I always said, doesn't matter what we do. Ooh, hold on, I have a bag about to fall into the river. It doesn't matter what our intentions are. It doesn't matter where we volunteer. It doesn't matter who we want to help. If there's a chance that we're endangering our kids, we stop. And that's what we felt in Cambodia. We came to volunteer, and when we arrived, um, 
all the, all, the, all the schools and orphanages were shut down because of some disease. And then a week or two later, like 60 kids in Cambodia were died from this disease. And we're like, forget it. We're not, we're not going to enter the schools and volunteer with our kids. We can volunteer with our kids, but we're not, we're, we can volunteer, but we're not going to endanger our children. And it looks like this is endangering our ch kids. So I just want to share with you my apprehensions because like, you know, we make plans and I realized that this is the first time we're actually making plans that we have to stand behind. We've always been like, oh, we've been, you know, invited to work in a hostel in Moscow and we almost went for six months to Moscow and then it fell through last minute. So, you know, we have no tickets anywhere. You know, this is the first time that we are like actually committing to meet someone somewhere and do something. And it's not, as is, it's kind of stressful. Like, you know, what if I, you know, fall in love with some place and want to stay for six months? And then I realized, okay, I'm going to do this um, and, and recognize the absolute first priority is my children's safety without having to feel that I'm making excuses. Um, so just wanted to share my apprehensions. <laughs> okay, these people look at me, these Vietnamese are like, why is she recording herself? She's really odd. Yeah, hello. Hello. <laughs> you want to say hi? Hello. <laughs> Ah, uh, really weird foreigners. Right? I'm the foreigner, not them. 